Okay, good morning, everyone. So remember last time we we were talking about different methods, yeah? And so we started with the simplest one is the bisection method for solving uh, fx equals zero, right? <clears throat> so the bisection method, you just keep <clears throat> chopping the, the intervals into half and then you check whether the opposite size, I mean, the function opposite size of the two ends, and then you keep the <coughs> keep dividing the intervals, okay? And the fixed point iteration is, you just keep applying the function, you know, to, to the point again and again. So, so xn plus one, it just equals gxn. And we show that, we show that, you know, I mean, uh, the fixed point iteration, you have to have the derivative at the, the zeros, it has to be less than one. So then you can apply the methods. And then we show that, okay, so both bisection method and fixed point iteration are slow methods. And then we introduce Newton method. So Newton method is, you know, a faster method and we wish it has a second order of conversion, okay? <clears throat> so Newton method, if you remember the pictures, it looked like this. So you have a, a curve, the red curve, and you start at the point Xn, and you draw a tangent line, okay? And then you let the tangent line cut the or X axis, and this is your new, new points. And then, you know, you from Xn plus one, you can draw the, another tangent line and then we'll cut the X or X axis at Xn plus two and so on, okay? But so far we have considered only equation of one variables, okay? So Newton method or even the fixed point iteration or the bisection method, we consider only F of X so now what happens if you have two variables? So if I want to make this formula for two variables, then what would be the problem? So suppose my function is f of x and y, right? Then I want to apply Newton method. Then what is going to replace this formula? Okay, so this is the topic of today. Today we study the Newton method, but for, for more than one variables, okay? So pay attention, okay? So this one is you have Xn plus one, only one point. And this one is Xn, and this one minus F over F prime, right? See, this one works only for one variable, right? So now, how, how do you make it works for, say, two variables? If it works for two variables, then it can work for N variables. Okay, so so maybe let me <clears throat> first before before we introduce the multivariate Newton method. So let let we introduce the multivariate Taylor polynomials. So now, so suppose I have a function. Okay, so we also mentioned secant method. So secant method is when you don't have a derivative and then you use. Uh, that divided difference. But again, so this, this formula is only for one variable, right? F of X only. If you have F of X and Y, this formula doesn't work anymore. And remember <clears throat> in the navigation equations, you know, to, to identify the position of your mobile phone, you need to solve four nonlinear equations. And so now we have to come up with a, at least a equation that solve, I mean, a method that solve two variables equations. Okay, and then, <clears throat> okay, so now, now let me introduce the Taylor expansion for two variables, okay? So this one, <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we ignore the high order. We, we just take the, um, you know, first order, the higher order, we just ignore it because it will be complicated. So suppose F is a function from Rn to R. So remember F now can have N variables, 
okay like f of x uh, one x2 or f x1 x2 x3 and so on okay and it map to a real real values and suppose now you have h1 h2 hn a very small number then f of x1 plus h1 so it's in the neighborhood of x1 okay and in the neighborhood of x2 and so on up to a neighborhood of xn can be expanded by this formula so this is the value at x1 up to xn right and this one is a partial derivative remember now the function has more than one variable so you have to take partial derivative so this is a partial derivative with respect to the first variable multiplied by h1 and this one partial with respect to xn multiplied by hn and you see this is the approximately because we ignore the higher order terms okay because higher order terms then you have a second order derivatives and it could be complicated so now for example <clears throat> suppose i take f of x1 x2 see two variables yeah is x1 square plus x2 square plus logarithm x1 okay and then x1 x2 will be 1 comma 2 and h1 equals 0 0.1 h2 equals 0 0.2 so what is the <clears throat> what is the partial derivative with respect to 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 x1 so now suppose i have uh so you you can see my writing board yeah so suppose i have f of x1 comma x2 so you can see my my writing yeah so equal x1 square plus x2 square plus logarithm of x1 right so then partial f with respect to x1 will be 2x1 plus 1 of x1 right question uh, okay thank you you can see it so then partial of f with respect to x2 which is equal to x2 okay so there's no more x1 uh, anymore right because it's a lie constant and then now <clears throat> if you take uh, x1 x2 to be to be um, 1 and 2 right so 1 comma 2 then this one is just uh, 2 2 times 1 right plus 1 over 1 so just equal 3 okay and partial f with respect to x2 at the point 1 comma 2 is just equal 4 right so therefore you know i mean if you take f of x1 x2 uh approximately equal <coughs> sorry this one should be plus h1 yeah i have to erase this um so i have to erase erase this yeah so suppose i have f of x1 plus h1 x2 plus h2 then then uh, by, by the formula this one is f of x1 x2 plus h1 partial f with respect to x1 at the point one two right plus h two partial f with respect to x two at the point one two and this one <clears throat> you put in the value so x one x two is just one two right one comma two and this one uh, h one is just zero point one and this one is just three and this one is zero point two and multiply by four and so f of one two will be like uh, 
uh, 1 plus 4 is 5 plus logarithm of 1 is to 0, right? <clears throat> so plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8. So it will be about 5, 5 plus uh, 1.1 will be 6.1, okay? <clears throat> so that is exactly what I wrote on the slide, yeah? So if I if you go back to the slide, because the... Uh, um, So, so if you go back to the slide, yeah. So because I skip the partial with respect to x one, okay. I skip some calculation here, but essentially, you can fill it up, and it will be called six point one. And then, you know, I mean, the value, the exact value, will be when you plug it in the formula directly. It will be six point one four five three something. So you see, your approximation is is correct up to the first digits after the dot, right? So, I mean, for first uh, derivative, I think it's good enough. Okay, so now I want to use this idea to derive the Newton method for multivariate uh, case, okay? So now I'm going to have, you know, like suppose F, F1, you know, X1 up to Xn equals zero. So this is my first nonlinear equation. And then I have F2, F3 up to Fn. Okay, so I have like N nonlinear equations. Okay. And now suppose now I have X star is the solution. So remember X star now is a vector, okay, a vector of N components. So X1 star and up to Xn star, so they are component of X star. Okay, and now remember we have iteration. So before we use n like a counter for iteration, but now the problem is n we use it for the dimension of the the system already. So now we have to fix to k, right? So k, so the vector x k is the kth iteration, right, of the method. Then, then if I apply the Taylor expansion. Okay, Taylor expansion, the multivariate Taylor expansion. Yeah, remember before we have H, H1, so H1 is just the difference between uh, X1 star and X1K. Okay, so <clears throat> so maybe let, let, let me go back to the previous slide and, and uh, I want to make a connection between the two of them, yeah. Okay, so we here we have we have the Taylor expansion look like this. So so let me let me write write clearly so then you will see it. So so now let me clear on the drawing. Yeah. So before <clears throat> before we have something like this. Before we have f of x one h one up to xn plus hn is f of x1 up to xn, okay? Is h1 partial f with respect to x1, x1 up to xn, right? Plus up to hn partial f with respect to xn, x1 up to xn. Okay, yeah. But now, <coughs> now what happened is I want to make, uh, I want to make X star, okay? So I want to consider this one to be my X star. Okay, so X star to be X one star up to XN star, right? And you see, so x1 star equal x1 plus um, h1, right? So, so, so now you see that if I put x star to be, so x1 star to be x1 plus 
H1. Then the H1 will be just the X1 star minus X1, right? Yeah. So therefore, you know, this one would, will become, uh, well, this one is still X1, X, Xn, yeah? But this one will become X1 star minus X1. And, you know, partial F over X1 and at the point, you know, X1, Xn, yeah? Up to, so Hn now will become X1, <clears throat> the Xn star, right? Minus uh, Xn. Partial F respect to Xn. Okay, just a shape of variable. And this one is still F of X1 up to Xn. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, so that is how, how I get the, the equation, yeah? But now I suppose my X1 up to Xn, I, I, I have to use um, like the gate for the, for, the, for the iteration. So it's a bit like messy here, but suppose I put a K here, yeah? K here for just the iteration, so not not a power. Yeah, so so the K here. Then this one just become a K. So remember K. K for K iteration. And you will see you will see it later. Yeah, iteration. Yeah, and and then then this one will be a K here. K here. K here. K here and so on. Okay. Okay, so you 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 see that is how I got the equation. Yeah. So now if you <clears throat> go back to the slide, you go back to the slide, you will see that. So you will see uh so you, you will see this equation, yeah? So this is exactly what I wrote here. So I derived from the, from the Taylor uh, approximation of uh, function of n variables, okay? So look carefully, okay? So now this, this system, it just come from the, the, the Taylor expansion, okay? But now what's so special about X star? So X star is a solution. So then what is this value? So what is F1 of X star? So what is F1 of X star? So what is this value? So I got this one from the Taylor expansion, right? And then, then what is this uh, value? What is F1 of X star? Zero, yes, because it is a solution, right? So then F1 has to be a solution, uh, ha has to be equal zero and Fn X star has to be equal zero, okay? Yeah, so, so now let me, <clears throat> let me rewrite this one, but in terms of a vector and a matrix multiplication notation. Okay, so now, now let me just look at this equation, the system again. And now I want to write down in terms of uh, the system of, of equation. Okay, so, so you, have, you have this, yeah? So, so now I, I want to, so, so this one will be my, uh f1 okay so this one will be my f1 so f1 because remember we have n equation yeah so this one is only my f1 okay so now you 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 remember the notation already i can erase erase this erase this yeah and then I, I, I put 
this one to be my my x x star yeah so i i want to put this one so so you remember yeah i i just replace this one by my x star because i want to save some space so so th this one i will write x1 star x2 star so exactly like in the in the slide yeah? Okay, so this one is only for F1. And remember I have F2. So so maybe I, I have this one is F1, right? F1 of X1 star dot up to Xn star, right? Then I have F2, then I have F3 and so on. And then I have Fn, so Fn X1 star x n star right approximately equal f n of uh, so so now this one i write a vector so i i i don't want to write on the components of the vector then this is a as x k okay and this one is still x one star minus x one to the k okay so i don't want to use red pen anymore because it's a bit tedious so but this one is partial with respect to fn x1 okay and the last term will be x n star minus x n to the k partial fn respect to x n okay but now <clears throat> i want to write down as a, a matrix so i want to write out see this one is just a system of of nonlinear equation well, actually it's become linear right because because you, you see everything is just uh i can split it up in into a, a vector so I, if i write the left hand side right i write this one is f1 okay and this one i just compress it into a vector notation so x x star right and dot dot dot, dot f n of x star vector right equal and this one is f1 x to the k so remember now it's a it's a vector so x k to the is a vector right and fn x to the k okay so now be careful with this next term yeah so next term now i want to write down it's a matrix so now the, the matrix look like this so it will be partial f1 with respect to x1 and then partial F1 with respect to uh, X2 and so on. Up to the last term will be partial F1 with respect to Xn. And then dot, 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 and the last will be partial Fn with respect to X1, partial Fn with respect to X2. And the last one will be partial Fn with respect to Xn. Okay. And then these vectors will be will be what it will be x1 star minus x1 to the k and x2 star up to xn star minus xn to the k right see so <clears throat> so you see right so you see it right so you are great right so I just rewrite. I just rewrite this as a, a system of a vector and then matrix multiplied with a vector. Okay. And so now, I mean, I can, I can, I can re rewrite a bit more, right? I can. So suppose now I now because I I want to. I want to I have to erase it because I have don't have space, but I, I but you see what is going on, right? You see what is going on. So we have a Taylor expansion and then we have a 
we have a solution and we just rewrite it at a as a system of equations yeah and now remember you know this is just a zero vectors okay so this is a zero vectors okay and this one okay so remember we introduced the notation of um the the the, the vector f okay so f is a vector of n component you see so everything now very 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 compressed yeah okay so so this this one is just a vector of of function from f1 to f f2 up, up to fn and the function applied to the vector x iteration k yeah and remember this vector has n components okay and now this is a matrix right so this one is a matrix so i call this one a matrix j so <clears throat> j j for jacobian okay so j for jacobian and you know jacobi he's uh he's a mathematician who came up with this uh, matrix uh, at the first place so now we go after him so jacobian matrix okay so to remember his contribution so <clears throat> so jacobi he has more contribution than just this matrix but you know this matrix now is named after him so this is a Jacobian matrix, okay? And you, you evaluate at the point x, k, okay? And then this, this, this one will be a vector, right? So the vector will be the vector x star minus x to the k, okay? So you see it? So now I, I wrote down everything. So this one is the, it's a dot here, actually it's the matrix multiplication. Okay, the matrix multiply with a vector. Okay. Yeah, so far so good, right? So now maybe, now it's time to go back to the, the slide because this is exactly what I have in the slide. So in the slide, I just skip a few steps. But now if you go back to the slide, you see that this is exactly what we have. So we have f x k, right? And remember, remember everything is here is a vector. F the bone face is a vector. X bone face is a vector. K is the iteration. So there's nothing to do with the uh, one or two or n. Yeah, as will be discussed later. K is just a fixed a fixed number. So j j is the Jacobian. Yeah, J, J Jacobian evaluate at the point X, K, okay? Multiply with X star minus X, K, and remember just equals zero, okay? So approximately equals zero. So that is what we have uh, from, from the system before, right? And then now, <clears throat> if I rearrange, rearrange this equation, I move, I move this, uh, you know, f uh, x k to, to the right, and I multiply with the inverse of this matrix. Then I just have x star equal, or approximately equal, right? The k iteration of the vector x multiply with the j inverse f of x k, okay? And then now, <clears throat> now from this one, remember X star is the one that I want to, to find out, right? X star is a solution, right? But now, because we want to do the iteration, with the iteration we'll try to, to get into the solution. So now I replace X star by XK plus one. And so this is my Newton method for, for N derivatives. Okay, so this is the Newton method for N derivatives. Uh, sorry, for N uh variate equation so now what do you see if you if you compare this one with a one-dimensional case what is the what is the new thing so remember what is the one-dimensional remember what is the one-dimensional uh, newton method
Yes. So now the Jacobian, the inverse of the Jacobian replaced the derivative. You know, before we have fxk over f prime xk. Yeah. But, you know, one over f prime xk now has to be replaced by the inverse of the Jacobian. Okay. And that is a Newton method for multivariate case. And now the algorithm is, you know, you choose the initial guess. Okay, so X1, and then every time you have, you see the problem <clears throat> with this one is you don't want to solve the, you don't, you don't want to, to, to compute the inverse matrix explicitly because inverse of the matrix is on way, is on ways, uh, you know, like uh, unstable process, yeah. So now, now in order to, to implement this, without computer inverse, then you solve this equation. You solve this equation, right? So dk is a solution of j uh, dk equal minus fx xk, okay? So in order to avoid the numerical instability. And then you define xk plus one just equal xk plus, you know, d, d to the k, so d to the k is a solution of, of this one, yeah? And that is how, how it works, yeah? So the inverse of the Jacobian should, should never be explicitly calculated. And so suppose now I have, I have this uh, equation and I want to solve it by, by MATLAB, or by, by Newton method using MATLAB, yeah? So, so now, how, how do I do this? So now let me, so remember this uh, equation, yeah? So now let me try to solve it in MATLAB. So now we have it. Um, so so you have okay. So now you have an equation. <clears throat> you have the. So you have the function f, right? Sorry, I have to, I have to copy the function here. So now you, you define f to be like anonymous. Well, you have f1 and f2. So you can define f uh, x, okay? So remember x is a vector. So you can define x1 square plus x2 square. <clears throat> so this one just number, right? Minus a x1 minus four x2 plus 11, right? And you can define f2 to be x1 Square so anonymous function can take in a vector, okay? So x two square minus twenty x one plus seventy five, okay? And now you define the Jacobian. So the Jacobian. So again, now the Jacobian can can take in a as a vector as well, right? So, while well, you define the Jacobian, you can compute it directly, yeah? So, so it will be like two x1, uh, two x1, yeah? So the first, uh, so it's a two by two matrix, yeah? Two x1 minus eight, uh, and then two x2, Okay, so make sure that you do the calculation correct. Okay, I have, you can check my calculation. But, but this one will be a Jacobian like this. So, so X, so you see you have first, you have to take the first function, take partial what is X1. You got two X1 minus eight and then two X2 minus four. And then the second function, you got two 
x1 uh, minus 20 and the second one will be two question why do you do j minus i should say equal right not minus equal is it too small maybe let me make it a bit bigger uh, I can make the font a bit bigger, so home. The fonts will be say 14. Okay, so the font bigger, yeah? So can you see it now? Okay, so now <clears throat> go back to the, the function, yeah? So now the second derivative will be 2x1, 2x1 minus 20, and the other one is just 2x2. Okay, so I have f1, f2, and Jacobian. And now I just say, okay, so now I have an initial guess. So my x, so remember x now is a vector, so I just put an x is 2 and 4. Okay, so this one initial guess. Okay, then I just do the iterations. Okay, from one to say 15 iteration, yeah. You can define what number of iteration you can have. But let, let me just make it like 15, yeah. And then I do exactly the algorithm. So I, I solve, so, <clears throat> so I solve, Solve JD, JXD equal minus F of X. Yeah. So then how do I solve it? Well, I mean, I just said the equal J of X, X plus minus F. Well, minus F of X. Well, actually, f of x is not defined, right? So I have to define. Uh, <clears throat> I have to define f of x is f one of x, f two of x, right? So this is my. So you see, MATLAB is is very intuitive in the sense that. Everything is a vector, right? So now it understand everything as a, a vector. When when you wrote it down, x is a vector. F, F of x is a vector as well. So you can define it directly. And then when I solve for d, then I just make x k plus one to be. So now, now what I have is. Uh, Let me make it a bit bigger, yeah. So now what I have is x k plus one. So the <clears throat> the the formula is x k plus one equal x to the k plus d to the k, right? But actually we reuse the variable, so we just take x to be x plus d. Remember x is skip reducing it, and that's it. And now you run it. Okay, hopefully it works. Otherwise, we have to fix it. <coughs> so just run, yeah? Just run. And now, in the end, what do you have? You have x, okay? And now you want to check whether this is a solution. You just take f of x. You see, so f of x is a very small number. So you, because here I have only 15 iteration, but it gets down to 10 to the minus 15 already. Okay, uh, just want to make sure. It's up to you, it's up to you. I mean, the, the subscript, okay, the subscript, sometimes it can be confused with the power, right? 
So that's why when you use subscript, you have to be very careful. I mean, in, in the lecture note, because the, the, sorry, the superscript, yeah, the superscript can be confused with the power. So in, in this case, because the subscript, we use it for the elements of the, of the vectors already. Okay, so then I have to use a superscript for the iteration, right? Otherwise it's very confusing if you write, you, you can write like this, X comma, I mean one and then K, you know, then up to X and up to X and K. But then you see this one, you can confuse with the matrix because the matrix, you have a row and the index in the subscript. You know, so now when we have a, a vectors and then we have an iteration, then we have to choose, you know, which way to, to express it. And then because now I use superscript for the iteration that I have to put inside the parentheses. Okay. So does it make sense? Yeah. So you see that is the, the Newton method for, for two variables. Yeah. So, so now we, we go back to the slide and So you see that in, in this one, I mean, I did some explicit calculation, but I mean, you, you can check it by MATLAB. So if you do step-by-step, step, you run a step-by-step, step, you will see that initially you have uh, X1 to four, then you have F of X1, you have the Jacobian, this matrix, K equal two, K equal three, and so on. Okay, so this one, you just trace through the, the step and you see after eighth iteration, then you got now the, the values of the function is very, very small already, okay? Yeah, so that's about it. And that's about nonlinear equations. So now I think we have 15 minutes left. So any question about the class test? I mean, some people ask in question from class test, but you can ask me now if you want to. Well, let me stop the recording first and then uh, so